uh, we are Atlantic Canada's oldest internet service provider. We're a registered nonprofit charitable society. Uh, we've been in business since 1994 and uh, been helping to bridge the digital divide in all that time. Now, when we started out in 1994, this was the kind of service we offered. This is text based internet. Um, that's the Google homepage. And uh, we still offer this service today. This is what free internet looks like. This is the bottom of the barrel that gets you on the internet. Pretty much anything that can dial a telephone can connect up through this interface. Now, there are three main dividers stopping people from accessing the internet. Uh, the first one is money, the second one is knowledge, and the third is the type of access and location of the person. So for money, we have found that when internet costs exceed $10 a month, people stop being able to afford internet. That's the bottom line. You have to have uninternet access for $10 a month or less, otherwise you start losing people. People having such problems are people on social assistance, disability, lower income in general, people suffering through illnesses, uh, the unemployed, people on pensions. Now we've discovered from a survey of our members that there's a gap of knowledge the older you get. Um, by the time people are in their 70s, half of them are not comfortable with their level of knowledge. They're unfamiliar enough with the technique, technology. Now bear in mind too, this is a graph from surveys of our users. So our users are the ones who already made it to the internet. These are the ones who got on the internet and they're able to respond to an internet survey and give an answer. So in other words, the actual numbers are probably worse than this. Now, location. Um, the Nova Scotia government decided to divide up the province among three companies and uh, task them with bringing a wireless service around the province. Um, the last figure I heard was uh, that they're very much behind, that they're, are, uh, um, 6% of the province has no access whatsoever to any kind of broadband service. Um, it's basically trying to overcome the problem of getting internet service at last mile to the people in the remoter areas. Um, the trouble with it is they're selling a $50 a month access service. Um, so not everybody can afford 50 bucks a month. Remember our $10 limitation earlier. So here are some voices from the local digital divide. Um, these are some of the comments people were giving with our survey. Um, so, I mean, disability, financial issues, health issues, age, old technology, our computer's old and slow, there's a number of us using it, health issues, heart attacks, um, health issues, health issues, terminal cancer. I mean, the point is, a lot of these things can happen to any of us. Uh, when, you, uh, when your health starts to go, you typically don't have a lot of resources. All the things you have are dedicated to trying to keep yourself alive. But, like this guy says, he's got terminal cancer, he does not have cable, he does not have satellite, does not have high-speed internet, doesn't have a cell phone. We're his only communication with the outside world. This is a responsibility to us. Um, without us, these people would be just left out in the cold. So, is internet access a human right? Well, Finland is the first country to make a law saying that yes it is. Um, they've defined the speed of the access as being one megabit per second. And they want to improve that to 100 megabits per second by 2015. Um, France, Spain, Greece, Estonia have all followed suit with their own laws. I think you're going to see this as an emerging, emerging trend. Um, that list of countries is going to be added to. However, in Halifax, things are going the other way. One in four people in Metro have no home access. One in five, no access at all. When we started looking at this uh, sort of statistic back in the late 1990s, Halifax was in second place for internet access, in no small part having an active community net in the city. Um, all the top cities at the time were cities with community nets. We, were, we played an important role with getting a lot of people online. Um, since then, we've fallen to 10th place. 
Now, as far as is this current, BBC World Service, March 8th, Monday, <coughs> released a survey. 27,000 people in 26 countries were asked, is internet access a fundamental human right? 8 out of 10 said, yes it was. Of the people who had internet access, 9 out of 10 said it was. So then we get into the global <coughs> digital divide. If money isn't, an op isn't a problem, um, you're still stuck. Now the world leader is Japan. Their average internet speed is 61 megabits per second. Their price for 1 megabit per second per month, the Finnish human right, 27 cents US. You go over to Canada, our average speed is 7.6 megabits per second. Our average price for that speed, $6.50 US. So, 27 cents, $6.50. So the average speed, we as Canada are a third tier country. We used to pride ourselves on being among the fastest, we are no longer among the fastest. We are now third tier. The United States, they're in worse shape than us. But, this part of the chart reflects how much of the population has access to that high speed internet. And you'll find that Canada is at hovering around the 70% mark, but you see the states actually has a bit better broadband penetration than we do. Now, this pie chart here is taking all the bandwidth used by the top 20 nations. So this giant wedge here is how much of that bandwidth Japan is using. This slice here is how much we're using Canada. That's the Americans. So globally, we're not holding our own. Now this are the local bandwidth prices in Halifax. Um, if you're buying high speed internet access, you're paying one of these prices here. Now you'll notice this orange stripe here, that is the national average. So with $6.50 US, that works out to be $6.93 Canadian. So they're the national average for speed and price. So you notice there's only three offerings in Halifax that give you more than that. And the top speed, 15 megabits per second, is less than a quarter of the average speed in Japan. So when we get down to dial-up internet, the picture gets even worse. Now, us at Shibakuto, we run dial-up as cheaply as it can be run. And for the one megabit per second to do that on a dial-up connection, you would have to have 20 dial-up connections running simultaneously. To do that on our system, it would be costing you $208 a month, or 30 times the national average. Now, the exact same phone plan from Bell, the, the Bell Alliant Unlimited Dial-Up, that would be $579 a month to get one mega per second out of that, or 83 times the national average. So, the lesson here is pretty clear. The cheaper internet you're getting, the more you are paying for it. Now, when you get into the Bell Alliant Dial-Up Limited Hour plans, you're, you're paying ridiculous sums of money. Um, 2,000 times the national average. Now these prices are, um, as of today, pulled from the Eastlink and Alliant websites. The Eastlink and Alliant prices do not include sales tax, so in other words, these prices are lower than you'd actually pay. Um, we don't charge tax on our price. And you, sh you should add Omniglobe to your chart. I don't know Omniglobe. That's the broadband. Oh, the, the wireless? Yeah, Okay, wireless. well that would be 46.95 a month. And uh, they only give you one and a half megabits per second. If you can get that. Yeah. Um, so. I, it's, I think it's they, more they, they 46. Be, it's 49 or something. But. They'd be there somewhere. Yeah. <clears throat> so our current solution, the dial-up access for 125 a year. It's the best we can do. Uh, we have very limited resources. The average dentist makes more than the Shibakuto community net in total. Um, <laughs> We have tried very, very hard to implement a wireless system of our own, but we've had no public support, no money. Um, even today, though, we are still working on a system. Uh, Jonathan, where'd you go? Still in the hall. Uh, typical. Very many years. Um, just today, we had some new equipment show up in, a, in the office and uh, for the wireless service. We can only buy the stuff in little dribs and drafts. We just do not have money, and we're not getting support from anybody. Yeah, Jonathan back there is holding uh, the wireless transfer. That would be outside. That would live on the side of a building, 
and provide a neighborhood with wireless access. 